Hello, uh, good morning to everybody or good afternoon, depending to where you are connected. So today uh, we will have a new session of Open Box uh, on metabolism and lymphatics in uh, Alzheimer's disease. So, and the first speaker of today is uh, Carmen Romero Molina. She's a neuroscientist. She is working in uh, Sevilla, in Spain, where she obtained her PhD in molecular biology. And she's on the role of microglia in Alzheimer's disease. And today she will present uh, her recent work on uh, metabolism in Alzheimer's disease, specifically in hypoxia. So Carmen, please, the stage is yours. Thank you very much for this uh, very nice introduction. So I will proceed to share the screen. So. Can you share, uh, see the screen, right? Yes, everything is right. Thank you. Okay, so welcome everybody. I'm very happy to take part in this open box uh, session. Today I'm going to talk about our paper recently published in Nature Aging, which is titled Hypoxia Compromises the Mitochondrial Metabolism of, microglia, of Alzheimer's Disease Microglia via HEF1. So uh, as you may know, microglial cells display a wide variety of functions in the central nervous system. Recently, several variants in glial biology related genes have been associated with a higher risk of AD and with a more severe progression. Many works are trying to develop how microglia interacts with both tau and A beta pathologies both uh, hallmarks in AD, but the underlying mechanisms are not well described yet. In our lab group, we have been trying to characterize microglial response in AD for several years. We have observed that there is a clear microglial activation both in APP and tau AD models. It's been published that homeostatic microglial progresses towards a disease-associated phenotype in different diseases, which means a down-regulation of homeostatic genes and up-regulation of genes involved in microglial activation, which at late stage is termed to dependent. However, our transcriptomic data from AB patients reveal important differences between my a models and AD patients in microglial phenotype. In fact, we observe a microglial degeneration in the hippocampus of AD patients at BRAF 5 6 stages, with a reduction in microglial domain and in special coverage. Then, our aims are to study both active and dysfunctional microglia and answer why do microglia become dysfunctional. In AD, there is also important hypoxia and hypoperfusion, which is potentiated by modifiable risk factors. Inflammation, uh, sometimes, most of the time, carries out with hypoxia, and also hypoxemia are related to inflammation being this a positive um, feedback, uh, feed, uh, feedback loop. Sorry. So in Armoxia, HIF1 is hydroxylated UV39 and then degraded. When oxygen levels are reduced, HIF accumulates translocs to the nucleus and induces the expression of HIF1 target genes responding to hypoxia. In this work, we focus we focus on microglia surrounding A beta plates, which we call A beta associated microglia. It has been proposed and it was uh, recently elegantly reported by Dr. Pascal Group that A beta plates are hypox regions. Actually, has, uh, it was previously proposed and we clearly demonstrate in our paper if one alpha is upregulated around a beta plaque, plaques. And specifically, we observe 
an EAP regulation of HIF-1 alpha in microglia proximal to EBITDA plaques in our uh, APPPS1 model. This led us to uh, study to uh, define a hypoxia microglia module. For this, we use primary microglial cells, which we subjected to hypoxia. We perform a, trac a transcriptomic analysis and we identify differentially expressed genes. To validate our gene sets, we use primary microglial cells in which we can delete HIF by tamoxifen administration. We confirm that uh, after treatment, there is a reduction in HIF-1 alpha expression. And in this model, we induce a hypoxia by using the MGO, which stabilizes HIF. We observe an upregulation of HIF-1 target genes after hypoxia induction, but this upregulation was abolished if we de delayed HIF. Then we have validated that all these uh, gene sets are dependent on HIF-1 alpha. So once we have defined our hypoxia microglia module, we wonder if it was enriched in avita associated microglia. For this, we developed a specific protocol in which we isolated class 7A high active microglia from AV models. As expected, we observed an enrichment in the MG and the gene sets, which uh, suggests, which indicates that microglia acquire a dam phenotype. Additionally, we also observe an enrichment in the hypoxia microglia module in a beta associated microglia, but this enrichment was uh, not uh, very important in active microglia from our town mice. Actually, the direct comparison of active microglia from both our AD model prevailed a significant enrichment in A beta associated microglia, which was further validated by a reanalyzing already published data. We found that there is an enrichment of the HMM in another amyloidogenic model, but not in ALS or during aging. On the other hand, we also observed that the most enriched biological process in active microglia from our AD model is oxidative phosphorylation. It has been previously reported that uh, immune cells, when they undergo activation, they are sustained by an anaerobic metabolism. However, our transcriptomic data reveal an enrichment not only of the oxygen, but also of related processes such as electron transport chain, the respiration, and the assembly and biogenesis of respiratory chain complexes. All these indicate that chronic AD microglia activation is sustained by an oxidative metabolism. And this enrichment of the oxygen was also found in the 5FAD model, in an ALS model, and more relevant when we reanalyze published data from human post-mortem samples, we observe an upregulation of genes involved in mitochondrial function in the respiratory transport chain in AD samples, which uh, has been also recently corroborated by a new publication. Then, in AB that associated microglia, there is a balance between oxygen and heat signaling pathways. As I mentioned before, a beta plaques are hypotrigium, but this balance allows microglia to surround them closely and get activated. It has been described that uh, in under circumstances of increased oxygen, but when there is also nutrient starvation or mild stress, there is mitochondrial elongation. This uh, led us to study mitochondrial morphology in a beta associated microglia. So for this, we use uh, APVPS1 mice, uh, 14 small own, and we perform electron microscopy. 
So in the first image, we can observe a microglia distal to A beta players, and we observe a round shape of mitochondria. In the second image, we can observe an A beta plug and some microglia surround it. If we zoom in, there is a clear mitochondria elongation in A beta associated microglia which uh, supports our previous finding of the importance of the oxus in this microglial activation. To further validate our hypothesis, we move in vitro and we use primary microglial cell cultures, which uh, we treat with a beta oligomers for 24 hours. We perform metabolic uh, assays by using the seahorse technology and we observe that there is a significant increase in the maximal respiration capacity in response to a beta pathology. Moreover, we also studied the protein expression of some components of the respiratory transport chain. Although there are no significant changes in complex five, we observe a slight increase and a an, an significant one in complex one and complex two. Finally, we also treated our primary microglial cells with a beta oligomer under two different conditions which impair oxygen. On the one side, uh, we subject these cells to 1% oxygen, and on the other side, we use primary microglia from TREM2 knockout mice. It has been reported that the TREM2 through the amateur axis is essential to maintain microglial metabolic thinness. And also our um, data, or our transatomy data from our AD models reveal that active microglia has an enrichment in the mTOR uh, gene set. So in this experiment, the control condition, when we treat microglia with a beta oligomer, we observe an upregulation in pro-inflammatory mediators indicating microglial activation, but under hypoxia or when TREM2 is impaired, this microglial activation is abolished, supporting the importance of TREM2 oxygen axis and microglial response towards a beta. Actually, when we subject microglial cells to hypoxia, we observe a reduction in the basal respiration. But which are the consequences of this? So we observe that under hypoxia or uh, under DMGO treatment, there is a reduction in microglial proliferation capacity. To validate this, we also perform um, in vitro cultures from knockout PHP mice. So PHP proteins are responsible for HIF-1 hydroxylation, which is required for HIF-1 ubiquitinization and degradation. Then, if we knock out PHP protein, there is an increase in HIF. So we observe a diminution in the number of cells in primary microglial cultures from our heterozygous or knockout PHP mice. Then we also corroborate this finding by using primary microglial cells in which we can't uh, delete HIF-1 uh, alpha. So we subject both cultures to hypoxia and we observe that if HIF-1 is inhibited, the microglial proliferation capacity is recovered. Then we can establish that hypoxia induced microglial quiescence. So far, we can establish that proliferation and clustering of microglia around A beta plaques in vivo depends on the balance between HIV and aerobic re respiration. So we wonder what happens if uh, we subject animal to hypoxia. So in humans, this uh, will mimic uh, like uh, vascular alteration that are mainly modifiable risk factors. So when we subjected our ATP mice for a chronic hypoxia, we observe a diminution in the total number of microglial cells. And also 
in microglia surrounding aberta flakes. And a reduction in the expression of uh, a proliferation marker. But which consequences does it have in A beta pathology? So, hunger hypoxia, there is an increase in A beta loads and also in the size of a number of A beta plaques accompanied by an increase in oligomeric A beta. In regards to neuron pathology, we observe an increase in the presence of neuritic dystrophies under hypoxia. Additionally, as we have previously reported that uh, somatostatin and neuropeptide-wide gabarit neurons are like very sensitive to degeneration in the hippocampus of APPPS1 mice, we uh, measure these markers and we observe a reduction in these interneuron markers we suggest that uh, there is even more neurodegeneration. So similar results have been found in works in which there is trend to impairment, suggesting that the uh, phenotype of microglia under a genetic uh, risk factor such as trend to variants is similar to the phenotype acquired when we have modifiable risk factors such as hypoxia. On the contrary, we observe that when the oxygen is enhanced, microglium increases its capacity of a beta phagocytosis. So at this point, we go back to our human samples. And as I mentioned, we observe a degeneration of microglia in the hippocampus of BRAC5-6 patients. So we should take into account, as I was saying, that uh, trend to variants or vascular factor can impair mitochondrial uh, metabolism in microglia and then microglia response. So we check the presence of hypoxia markers in AD brain. We observe an increase of HIT1 alpha at prac 3 for stages. And although uh, this is uh, bulk tissue, it has been reported that HIT1 alpha is mainly expressed by microglial cells. More important, we, uh, we reported an increase in HIT1 alpha gene targets at BRAC 5-6 uh, stages, which of course indicate that there is hypoperfusion in AD at late stages. Finally, in order to avoid inter-individual uh, variability, which is of course associated to human samples, we use um, from the same individual two different regions. So we choose the dendrite gyrus as an hypoxic region because it has been described that there is uh, low oxygen levels due to uh, trying to preserve uh, neurogenesis in this region and also just because of vascular dis uh, cerebral distribution. And we compare this region with the perirenal cortex, which is considered to be an almost region. We reported a significant decrease in the plate area covered by microglia in the dendrite gyrus. And more relevant, we observe that when there is a reduction in microglial coverage, there is an increase in 88 positive dystrophies. So nude plagues, the ones which have a protection in the less than one, which means that uh, the area covered by microglia is less than the one covered by the avita plug, there is an increase in neuritic pathology. And these uh, results have been also mimicked in AD uh, human studies in which there is trend to impairment. So then we can establish a protective role of microglia towards a beta related pathology. As take home message, I would like to say that apart from the uh, TREM2 alterations, which are, are non modifiable risk factor, we have found that AD modifiable risk factors such as hypertension, obesity, or diabetes, which reduce brain perfusion, will also compromise 
mitochondrial metabolism in microglia and mitochondrial, microglial function and worsen AD pathology. So uh, pharmacological agents that improve mitochondrial metabolic fitness of microglia should uh, be considered as therapeutics. So finally, I would like uh, to thank all the authors of the paper, mainly uh, the other first co-authors and of course, our corresponding authors, uh, Dr. Vitorica and Dr. Pascual. Then thanks to our financial support. And thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Carmen. It was a nice talk, very complete story. So uh, please, to the audience, if you want to ask questions, you can type them in the chat and I will read them to Carmen. Um, in the meantime, I have a question for you. So you mentioned uh, already that if one is uh, mostly expressed in microglia, but I was wondering if you look, if there was any effect on the astrocyte upon the hypoxia the effect in the, the microglia metabolism. Yeah, so it's a very interesting question. And we also check that because of course there is a clear a glial interaction between microglia and astrocyte. But uh, when we uh, subjected APP mice to hypoxia, to the chronic hypoxia, we didn't find any changes in GFP expression. And we didn't find a reduction in, ast uh, in astrocytes surrounding the uh, EBITDA plaques. So um, definitely um, there are no main changes in astrocytes regarding uh, low oxygen levels. And uh, this might be due because astrocytes uh, have like a closer um, uh, physical relation to the vasculature. So they may be more connected uh, to the vessels and have a better access to oxygen. And also we have found that oxy, um, astrocyte metabolism is not uh, that based on oxygen. It's maybe, maybe more based on glycolytic metabolism. So maybe that's why we don't see many changes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>